Hey everyone, it's your boy coming at you live. <laughs> Sorry, um, that was my friend Camille. He said I should sound more like a YouTuber, so I had to do that as well as tell people to smash that like button and subscribe. So Camille, that's for you. I will never be doing that again. So, uh, right, okay. Back to the point, focused. Uh, today's video, what we're going to be doing is looking at OSPF router types as they relate to areas. We'll go through the four router types and then at the end of the video, what I'm going to do is just give you two caveats which I think are important because they're often maybe misunderstood or ignored by some people. So we're just going to drill those down to make sure we're absolutely clear. Okie doke. So with that said, let's kick on. Let's do it. Okay, so let's go to the trusty whiteboard then, shall we? Okay, so we've got four different router types, and the first one, which we'll talk about, is called internal. Yeah. The second one is a backbone. The third one is an A, B, R, which is an area border router. And the last one is ASBR, which is Autonomous System Boundary Router. Okay, though, so let's go and discuss the very first one, which is an internal router. What exactly is that? So, if we go and look at the actual topology... Okay, so let's not make this any more complex than it needs to be. An internal router is a router in which all of its interfaces are within the same area. So looking at this diagram, what can we see here? Well, let's have a look at router 1 here, okay? It's got three interfaces, uh, 00, 01, and 02, and they are all within area 0. So this would qualify as a internal router because all its interfaces are within the same area. Likewise, with router 2, we've got gig 00, 01, 02, all within the same area. This would also qualify as an internal router. If we go to router 3, though, it's got some interfaces in area 0, but also area 5, so it's not an internal router, this one. The same is true for router 4. But if we slide along to router 5 here, we'll notice that it's got two interfaces, gigabit 00 and 01. Both of them are within area 5, therefore all of its interfaces are within one area, so this is an internal router. And likewise, if we go to 8 over here, its interface, gigabit 00, its only interface is within area 7, therefore it also is a internal router. That is pretty much it, there's nothing, there's no real frills about that, just look for all of the interfaces within the same area. That doesn't need to be in area 0, it can be in area 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, as long as it's confined to one area would make it an internal router, okay? And I suppose I should add for clarity that um, this router down here, number 7, this is not an internal router because we're talking about OSPF terms. This one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, they're all OSPF speaking routers. This one down here is EIGRP, so this is not classified as an internal router, okay? So just make sure that's clear. Okay, so the second one we're going to visit is the backbone router. Now, what a backbone router is defined as is any router which has at least one interface within the backbone. Now, what is the backbone? The backbone is area zero. So any router that has at least one interface within area zero is considered a backbone router. So clearly, router two's got three interfaces, so that's definitely a backbone router. Router one's got three, so that's definitely a backbone router. Router three here's actually got two, so that meets the criteria, so that is a backbone router. And router 4 has got interfaces in area 0, so it is also a backbone router. Nothing much more to it than that, so let's kick on to the next one. Now the third one is the ABR, the area border router. This one can cause a little bit of confusion, so let's just go over it slowly. So an ABR, quite simply, is a router which has interfaces in more than one area and it's got to have at least one interface in area zero that is not in the downstate. That's the part that people often get confused. So with that definition, what are our ABRs in this topology? So clearly, router three has got interfaces in more than one area. It's got an interface in area five, and it's got a couple in area zero. So it passes that, that check. 
And, like I say, at least one of those interfaces are in area 0, so router 3 is an ABR, okay? Likewise, router 4 has got interfaces in more than one area. It's got an interface in area 7, which is this one, obviously, and it's got a couple in area 0. Like I say, it's in area 0 and they're not in the downstate, therefore this one is also an ABR. Now you'll notice this one here, this straddles a different, what's called an autonomous system. This one is not an ABR, okay? Because even if this was, say, Area 10 and not EIGRP, I imagine it's OSPF, it would have interfaces in multiple areas, but it doesn't have any in Area 0, so it would not be an ABR. And we'll look at that when we get to the demo, okay? And the last thing I want to clarify is that by definition, is that because ABRs must have at least one interface in Area 0, they are by definition also backbone routers, okay? Now, the last one is the ASBR, the Autonomous System Boundary Router. What they are, they're defined as a router which connects OSPF to a different routing domain. Now, I've said that quite carefully because some people tend to say it connects you to an external autonomous system. That's not always true, and we'll actually see that in the demonstration later. But for the purposes of this topology, what one do you think is the ASBR? What is connecting us to a different uh, routing domain? Okay, clearly, not this, not this, not that's an ABR, but not an ASBR, not this, not this, not this, but this router here is connecting us to a different routing domain, which is EIGRP, so we'll actually have this one will be denoted as the ASBR. Now, what I want to do is actually do two short little demonstrations, just so we can get full clarity on the ABR and the ASBR definitions, okay? So just hang tight, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we're back, and in this one, what I want to do is just highlight the fact that OSPF, in order to consider a router to be an ABR, it must have at least one interface in Area 0 that is not in the downstate. So, as you can see here, we've got this topology here. Now, look at Router 6 there. Router 6 might look like an ABR because it borders two different areas, but it's not actually, in OSPF's definition, an ABR, and I'll show you that. So, if I go to Router 4 just now, okay, and I tell router 4 to identify which ones it sees as ABRs. I can do show IP OSPF border routers and all it identifies is number 2. Okay, number 2 here because 2 has also got an interface in area 0. Now likewise, if I slide over to router 8 and ask it to identify its border routers, show IP OSPF border routers, the only ABR it sees is number 3 which is this one here because it's also got an area, uh, sorry, an interface in area zero, but number six, even though it's sitting between two different areas on the quote unquote border, it's not been identified as an ABR. Now, one of the things about inter area OSPF traffic is that it must flow through area zero. So I'll just demonstrate this quickly. So I've got a look back 5.5.5.5 and router five, and I'll look back 7.7.7.7. .7 .7 .7 and router 7. Now if I want to ping from 5 to 7, you might think most efficiently it should just go through 6, but because it's not identified as an ABR, it will not take that path. So let's just do a, a ping and then a trace route to number, well sorry, from 5 to 7. So if I ping all the 7s, just show it in the routing table first. So we've learned an IA route for 7.7.7, .7 enter area, we ping it, Okay, now trace route, we're actually going to see it's going to take six hops all the way around the network. So there we go, six hops, that's when one, two, three, four, five, six round to router seven. Now, let's see if we can make this an ABR. Okay, so what we can do is a simple trick is, like I say, the rule is it has at least one interface in area zero that is not in the downstate. So let's just make a look back and go interface look back zero and we'll just do this, what, 66. Okay. And we'll do IP OSPF1 area 0. So I've created a loopback, and like I say, the loopback is in the upstate, so it's not down. So now if we go to router 4 and ask it to identify what it sees as ABRs, we do it to show IP OSPF border routers, it now sees 2 and 6 as an ABR, okay? And now if we do the same trace from 5 to 7, we can actually just go directly through 6 in a much shorter path, so if we ping 
all the sevens and we traced it this time two hops this time because we have an interface in area zero and it is not in the down state OSPF has set the B bit and it's now identified as an ABR okay so that's that for ABRs let's move to ASBRs Okay, now I've greatly simplified the topology. We've only got two routers both within area zero. Now you might be wondering how this relates to ASBRs because ASBRs are often described as connecting you to an, ex an external autonomous system, which I understand what people mean when they say that, but it often conjures up images of connecting you to an external network which you don't control, kind of BGP style autonomous system. Now, in the case of this, or rather in the case of ASBRs, OSPF will consider a router an ASBR if it is effectively introducing routes which are foreign to the OSPF process. Now, what does that mean? So if you're redistributing default static routes, redistributing uh, static routes, or redistributing even different OSPF processes, then it will be considered an ASBR because it will come into the OSPF process as a E2 route or a type with a type 5 LSA. So let's just demonstrate that, okay? So if I do a show IP in brief, we see we've got two loopbacks here. And if I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, we're actually got this adjacency with router two. Now let's just introduce um, loopback one into the OSPF process, that's fine. So if we do a show IP root, we can see we've learned that just as per normal, okay? Now, what if I ran a second OSPF process on this router here, okay? So I did router OSPF2 this time, and I put interface loopback2 into that process. So IP OSPF2, area 0 again, okay? Still area 0. And what I did was if I go into router OSPF1 and redistribute OSPF2 into it, okay? What's going to happen is... This router is going to see this route, if I give it a second, as an E2 route, okay, we see that there, it's an E2 route, and if I do a show IP OSPF database, the Type 5 AS external link, the advertising router is our router 1 here, and you can see that in the type, on the LSA type, so if I did a show IP OSPF um, database router self originate we're actually going to see that we are an ASBR, okay? So I just wanted to highlight that with both the ABR and the ASBR. That's the end of this video. The next one's going to be on OSPF states, and that's it for today. Okay, dope. So thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.